Good evening and welcome once again to Concord Baptist Church Wednesday evening service. Uh, all right, update on Dylan not doing good. Said so they're talking about pulling the plug. We don't, so we want to have special prayer tonight for Dylan. Amen. And, uh, did they find where the blood was going yet on Derek? Or they they give him the other transfusion? No, he didn't get the other transfusion. They still haven't figured out where the blood thing is going. We'll pray about that. Amen. I miss Squeaky. <laughs> he reminds me of a pet mouse. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, he's our uh, church mascot. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> Amen. Pray for his mom because she's going through a hard time right now with that. I was up there Sunday night, went to see him. And Tim was up there yesterday and today, weren't you? Monday and today. Monday and today, yeah. So uh, anyway, and pray for the family that had the funeral today. It was his name, Kevin, was it? Kenny. Kenny. And uh, pray for that family. So uh, we'll let Brother Dave open it up and then brother Tommy pray and brother Steve and then brother Richard and uh, brother Tim we see if we can get a prayer through for for Dylan amen ask the Lord to work a miracle amen. Lord, God, I'm say, Lord again would you thank you for this day Lord God would you thank you for the gathering here on the Wednesday night Lord to praise worship glorify you Lord God and hear from the scripture reading Lord and preach into thy word Lord God and Father, we, you heard the prayer request for Dylan. He's not doing well, Lord. And Father, he needs uh, intervention, Lord. And Father, I, I do pray, Lord God, that uh, that uh, you will look upon that situation, Lord God, and and uh, turn it, turn the situation around, Lord. That you, you're capable of doing anything, Lord. And for the for Derek and uh, and, the, and the families, Lord God, that they're going through the same thing with the, with their kids and all. And, Father, it's a, it's a rough thing, Lord, and Father, I, I pray that you give them much grace and much comfort, Lord God, and give the doctors much wisdom and to do the right thing and the right medicines, Lord, and Father, to, to go ahead and uh, get the uh, get these kids out of, uh, out of the uh, hospital, Lord God, get them home, Lord, and Father, uh, would you pray for the family that's, uh, that's mourning the loss, Lord God, and Father, it's, that's a hard thing, Lord, and things nowadays are hard enough to let alone have something like that to go through, and Father, I do pray, Lord God, that, uh, that you'll give them much comfort and much grace to, to deal with their situation, Lord God, and Father, uh, we do pray, Lord God, that uh, you're with each and every one of us, Lord, and Father, if there's any more coming, Lord, you give them traveling mercies, get them, get them here safe and whole, Lord, and Father, that... Uh, we do pray, Lord, that the pastor's got the message you'd have us to have tonight, Lord, that uh, you put on his heart what uh, you'd have us to have, Lord. And Father, to, to help us, strengthen us, Lord, to give us something to think about, meditate about, Lord, and carry us on through the rest of the week until we meet again on the next appointed time. And I thank you and praise you in the Lord Jesus Christ's name I do pray. Amen. Praise Heavenly Father. I want to thank you again for this day, Lord. It's a beautiful day you've given us. And Amen. Lord, situation and you know what's going on in Kim Lord and she was in that accident also Lord she got to go home Lord you I just you're a great physician Lord and I just pray you'll put your healing hands upon them and just just heal them Lord and get them get them back up and out of that hospital Lord and back with their families and I pray for the family Cindy and all I pray that you'll comfort her too in this situation Lord and seeing her children in the hospital Lord that's got to be hard and Lord I just pray you give her much grace Lord and Pray for a service night. I pray you'll be in if you get past what you have to have. And be sure to give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. In the holy precious name, Lord Jesus Christ, I do pray and ask these things. Amen. Lord, we say to Jesus Christ, Lord, we just thank you and praise you, Lord. Lord, we just lift up this, uh, this family to you, Lord. And Dylan seems to be in the Lord's hand, Lord. And Lord, I lift them up to you, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that, uh, that you'll intercede on this path, Lord God. Lord, not only for his sake, for his family's sake, but also for 
developers pumping for all this, all this stuff for you right now. Just wait for him as well, Lord God. Lord, that's another soul out there. Lord, I just pray for all people involved in this thing, Lord, that they take the seriousness of God for this. This is a real serious business. It's a serious business. And it's a real serious thing. It's why you need to check out it until you turn it into it. Lord, I also want to raise up, uh, or lift up, uh, you know, the thing that we, we know is Peter. Lost his wife this week, Lord. That was that's a lot of crap. That Lord, I just want to pray for the Lord. Pray for the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you tonight, Lord, and just uh, want to take time to just give you all the praise and honor, honor, Lord, for all that you do for us, Lord. And we thank you for your saving grace, Lord. And I just want to take time to lift up Dylan, lift up Derek to you, Father. And, um, I don't know your will, Lord, and I just pray that um, we know that it's good, Father, and I just pray that you would just um, be with this family and be with these young men, Lord. I pray that they will just uh, come to know you through this time, Lord, and I know it's painful for them, um, but I pray that, that they'll just turn to you in this time, Lord, and pray for Derek, Lord. Um, he may lose his brother, so I just pray that he'll just turn to you, Father. And just know the power of your saving grace and just continue to look to, look to you in this time of need, Lord. And no matter the outcome, um, I just pray that, that they'll just look to you, Father, and, and just lift up the family that um, lost a loved one, Lord. Um, and I just pray for peace in that situation. And I just pray that your hand be in on, on all these situations, Lord. Lord. Like Brother Steve said, you know, it's serious business, Lord. And, um, you know, they may not know you, Lord, but I just pray that they, they find the opportunity and they, you know, that they'll just look to you, Father. Good yeah. things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Lord, I ask that you come here tonight. And, uh, we thank you for allowing us to be here and to give you our very lives and our souls to you, Lord, that you may go through our prayers as we pray for Dylan and he's in real bad shape and he needs you, Lord. Your plan, we do not know, but we have something to do, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to heal him and, and uh, help him get through this. The subconscious will fight that he will see another day and use that life for you, Lord. Lord, we just uh, ask that you help Derek get healed up so he can be back here, Lord, and just allowing him to um, still be awake and be able to communicate and be able to receive you, Lord. And just thank you for uh, Kim as she had able to go home Sunday and that hopefully she will make it here tonight. And I uh, would we'll just that uh, you help Miss Diane as uh, she lost her son Kenny two weeks ago. And I would just uh, <clears throat> ask that she ease her soul in her pain, Lord. Just also pray for that driver who did hit uh, Cindy and all of them, and that his soul will be saved. That someone who can speak the word and speak life, Lord. Father, we just thank you. In your name, amen. And grace, Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, as we come boldly before that throne of grace, Father, to obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Lord, we pray for Cindy and her son Derek, and especially Dylan. Lord, uh, as Brother Rich said, we don't know your will in that sense, but Lord, uh, we pray your will be done, but Lord, you know what our will is. Our will is that you would heal them and raise them up, Lord, and, and get them out of the hospital and get them home and make them healthy again. Lord, that's our will. But uh, Lord, you said you're not willing that any should perish, Lord, uh, uh, I'm thankful that he did get to hear the gospel and that he had visited. And Lord, I just pray that, Lord, I've seen you work miracles. Lord, I, I know a man that they had in the hospital that hung himself out here on Platte Springs Road. And he said that he was brain dead and the parents asked us to go pray over him and Lord, we prayed over him. The next day, he was sitting up watching TV with my son-in-law. Lord, they couldn't they couldn't believe it, Lord. And we just knew it was you. And 
And then the Lord, he went back out 30 days later, sat on the railroad track, waited for a train to hit him. Man was determined to go. But Lord, I've seen you heal people. And Lord, I, my own grandson, Lord, laying in the hospital with blood on the brain. And they didn't know uh, where they were going to send him. Some kind of specialty trying to figure out what to do with him. And Lord, again, we're there. We prayed your will, but asked you to consider our will. Lord, next day the blood was gone and the doctors didn't know how it got there or where it went. And uh, but Lord, we do. We know that you're able to, to heal because you are the great physician. And you're the great healer. And Lord, no matter what the doctors might say now, Lord, as long as there's breath, there's hope. And Lord, we know that you're able to lift him up from the bed of affliction, make him whole again. And Lord, that's our will. We don't want to impose our will upon your will, but that's what we do will here, Lord, that he'd be healed. So, Lord, we just pray for Derek that you help him to heal him up also. And Lord, give much grace to his mom. And we pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. All right, Timmy. Hey, Russ. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what's the page? Thank you. All right, if you please stand, turn to page 236. Amazing Grace. <clears throat>
When you reach the end of all your understandings And you don't know which way that you should go When you feel that things are hopeless Or your life is out of hand Then my friend, there is one truth that you should know there is hope there is hope my Jesus to whispers there is hope for the ones who have gone astray Jesus said I am the way oh don't give up with Jesus there is hope. They say, where is the promise of his appearing? And they wonder if it ever come again. But God's word is true, and soon our Lord will come to claim his home. And together with all Facebook, we started out this week in the book of Ezekiel. We're going to go through the whole book of Ezekiel. And uh, I got this old book, Things to Come, by J. Dwight Pentecost. I don't agree with everything in it. And uh, it's Bible eschatology. It's the study of the last time, last days, prophecy. Uh, the end times. Uh, I've never read it. <laughs> I started to, but it, by the time you get through the general considerations and interpretations, you already got a bunch of notes down there. <laughs> Amen. Uh, a lot of this stuff is really good. And what brought it to mind to me was uh, Gog and Magog, amen, moving against Israel in the last days. And people are taking verses in the Bible and doctrine and they're misplacing it. They take Matthew chapter 24, which is during the tribulation period, and uh, they put that sometimes on the church, amen. But that's Israel, uh, the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, the day of the Lord. Uh, they have Gog and Magog moving on Israel uh, during the tribulation. And uh, where you see it in Revelation chapter 20, it's after the millennial, after Satan's been bound a thousand years. Uh, there's two battles there, the Battle of Armageddon, Revelation chapter 14, and uh, down through chapter 16. And... Uh, so I just wanted to go over. It's really interesting, and we're in the time where we might just see it. Amen. Hey, bet. Uh, what to look for. There's uh, different forms of interpretation in the Bible, and that's how you get so many different doctrines that are messed up. Uh, 
how many know what Armenianism is? We've been over it before, but there's some here that probably weren't here before we went over it. That's the belief that it's you plus Christ for your salvation. Amen. It's you plus your works, and that means if you don't continue in it, you can lose it. Uh, they take that out of Hebrews and I think chapter 6, where it said it's impossible to renew them again. Amen. Uh, that have tasted of the heavenly gift and been partakers of the Holy Ghost, uh, that if they should fall away, it'd be impossible to renew them again. Uh, that was dealing with the Jews that came from John's baptism uh, in the Gospels up until the temple was destroyed in 60 AD by Titus. Uh, they embraced the promises that were to them. God said he came unto his own, but his own received him not, but as many as received him to them gave him the power to become the sons of God. And those that converted over to the Lord Jesus Christ, well, they had to give up the blood sacrifice. All the feast days, all these things, amen. Uh, they had to give them up. And now it's just, wow, all I got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> and all the pomp and uh, the temple worship and all that, you know, gone. And then they go a little while and they just revert back to it. And Paul uh, could have lost his salvation if God had not intervened in the book of Acts because he had some brethren that had shaved their heads and taken a vow. And and uh, Paul went ahead and shaved his and took the vow. And after seven days, they're about ready to offer up the lamb. That would have done despite unto the spirit of grace and and uh, they would have trampled upon the blood of Christ, done the despite unto the spirit of grace there. And they could have lost it. <clears throat> but God got Paul out of there before they had a chance to do that. Amen. But once the temple was destroyed in 70 AD by Titus, then they could no longer go there to give a blood sacrifice. Amen. So that was the grace of God allowing Titus to come through. And... Uh, I talked to a Jew, his name was Avi, up at the airport when I had kept my plane up at uh, Winsboro, and he was a pilot, actually for a black preacher out of Atlanta, uh, him and another uh, Jewish fella, and I asked him, I said, where do you sacrifice, and what do you sacrifice? Well, we use chicken blood and symbolic. I said, according to the Torah, there's no salvation in that. You've got to offer it at the temple, at the altar, Amen. And, uh, man, he got to thinking. And he's the one that said, you Christians hate us. I said, no, the Catholics hate you. Christians love you. Amen. And uh, I never heard from him again. But uh, I hope he uh, went back, looked at it, and trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. Uh, we are... Not Armenians, amen. There's folks that believe you can lose it. Some of those are missionary Baptists, not all missionary Baptists. Uh, I can't think of the the others. There's a bunch of them. Uh, as far as Baptists are concerned, there's Church of God. Of course, they believe you could lose it. The Pentecostals believe you could lose it, uh, and then get it back, and you know just. Like I said, that one service, you know, he throws us out and pulls us back, throws us out and pulls us back. It doesn't work that way. He said, for by one spirit are we all baptized into the body of Christ, amen, sealed unto the day of redemption by the Holy Spirit of promise, and we're safe and secure in his arms. We're already seated in the heavenlies in Ephesians. But uh, there's another doctrine. Uh, they added a third one now of premillennialism everybody know what millennial millennialism is that's the thousand year reign of christ on this earth all right millennium is just a thousand and uh we believe as independent baptists and bible believers that we're going to go out before the tribulation amen which is premillennial so we're going out before that and We'll be coming back at the end of the tribulation period, that seven years that you read about in the book of Revelation and Daniel and Ezekiel. And then there's amillennialism, which they don't believe it. There's anything there. We're just all going to go through this thing. 
Then there's uh, mid-trib millennialism. That's where they think that the Lord's going to come back in the middle of the tribulation after the first three and a half years, amen, which doesn't coincide with scripture. The tribulation period is strictly for Israel. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble, all right? It's called the day of the Lord, not the day of Christ. The day of the Lord is different from the day of Christ. Uh, I use this all the time, uh, this epitaph that I saw on a tombstone in Charleston from a Huguenot, French Huguenot uh, church where the woman passed away in the 1700s and her epitaph on her tombstone said, go and learn that die you must and after come the judgment just. Said, here we all lie and hope to see the day of Christ and there see thee. So the day of Christ is for the church. Amen. The day of the Lord is a time of woe, time of trouble, time of sorrow, like never been before. And Israel's going to go through it. But there's going to be people that get saved during the tribulation. Amen. Uh, you know, it says if we take, if you're here for that and you're lost and uh, they want you to take the mark of the beast. Amen. And without it, you can't buy or sell or anything. So what are you going to do when it comes down to where you can't feed your family? Well, there's going to be people that are going to hold out and actually suffer and they'll end up dying. Amen. And they'll get saved during that time. And there'll be some Jews that get saved. And at the end, they'll come out at the white throne judgment, which is the judgment of those that come out of the tribulation period that were saved. And also for the lost before that, that have died over the ages. They're going to stand before God and give an account. We are justified before God as Christians through the blood of Jesus Christ. So therefore, the Bible says that we as Christians are going to go stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ to give an account for the deeds we did in our body, whether they were good or bad. Our works are going to be tried as by fire. Amen. Uh, things that were for the wrong reason, wrong motives, going to burn up like wood, hay, and stubble. But the things that did out of a pure heart towards the Lord Jesus Christ, out of sincerity, they'll be tried by fire like uh, gold and silver and precious stones, and they'll come through and be perfected. Amen. And you'll receive crowns. Uh, I believe there's also going to be a whipping because the Bible says, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. And he says, why call ye me Lord and do not the things that I command thee? You see, a lot of us, we say we get saved and then we go about and live our life the way we want to. We don't even consider what the Lord wants us to do. And it reminds me, I was looking online the other day, uh, some old pictures from where I grew a lot of years. I grew up in Masontown, Pennsylvania, and uh, that was quite a time but they had an old hotel there and I saw it in one of the pictures and they had a fire escape on the side and man, we used to play in that hotel and I mean, we played all kinds of games. We ran down the fire escape and all that, but it made me think again about people that a lot of times they're not so interested in going to heaven. They just want to hedge their bets because they don't want to go to hell. And so they try to use the Lord Jesus Christ as a fire escape just in case. Amen. But those that truly believe and, and they're born again, then they want to please the Lord. And they want to find out what his will is for our lives. Amen. Uh, we uh, a lot of times just go off and do our own thing. We don't even think to ask them. We were looking at a service truck, $87,000. I mean, nice truck, crane, you know, and everything. And, uh, I told the man, he said, come on in, let's, uh, let's draw up some paperwork and look at this thing. And I said, no, nah. I said, uh, my wife always told me, and I always listen to my wife. <laughs> you know what she said about, you know, you look at something, pray about it for about three weeks. Amen. And so it didn't take quite three weeks. And, uh, I got to thinking about it, you know, $1,200 payments, uh, what tell me uh, four or five hundred in taxes or a thousand in taxes, uh, insurance about three four hundred a month for commercial with million dollar liability and all that, 
that's that's a lot of work a lot of time you got to put in even to pay that and uh so i prayed about it and i was talking to a friend and he said you know it might be nice to ride around in a nice new truck like that and people go ooh, oh you know especially ones that don't even care about you they said boy i'm glad you got that truck stupid because now you got to pay for it and I, anyway uh then I got to thinking about it. I said, for that price, you could even put a new building up. You know what? So I was talking to Richard today while we were riding. I said, yeah, I think we'll just get a motor for the other truck there and fix it all up and paint it. And, you know, <laughs> no taxes, you know, hardly any. But how many, there's many times I did not stop to pray and seek the Lord's will on things. And it didn't turn out real good. <laughs> Amen. That's my wife. She's been through it all. Amen. But uh, and then, she, but she she always got a blessing out of it in the end, because she could say, "I told you so." <laughs> no, you're gonna do it again, aren't you, Frank? Amen. <laughs> but how much? How many of us really take time to pray and seek what, seek God's will and find out what it is He wants for us to do? Amen. All right, let's uh, the best way to study the Bible to me has been is you look at the post text or the pretext, the post text with the context. Amen. The Bible, most of the time, will interpret itself. Uh, the Bible says that the gospel we hid is hid to them that are lost. So they're not going to figure it out anyway. Amen. Uh, they might get some of the basics down, you know, and talk about the blood, different things like that. But to really understand the scriptures, unless you're saved and the spirit of God is your teacher, you're not going to, you're not going to get it. Amen. Uh, there is one thing he said in here. And I don't know where it's at. But it's basic saying, stick with the context, amen, of the scripture there, unless you have a companion verse, amen, that doesn't deny or uh, void another scripture. Like when we do the pre-Adamic earth, Bible says here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept, amen. So we're taking something from one book through another book. And we're putting it together, you know, not like, you know, Judas went out and hung himself. Go do you likewise. We're not talking about that one. Amen. We're dealing with a particular doctrine and scripture. And uh, a lot of times people get all confused and end up saying there's contradictions in the Bible when there is no contradiction. It's just that they don't have the understanding and, and they haven't rightly divided it. Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And the Bible is actually a library of books. Amen. It's an encyclopedia of the gospel and, and the purpose of man and the purpose of God and why he made us and, and uh, what he wants for us. Uh, let's turn over to uh, Revelation chapter 14. But anyway, during the week, we'll be going through the book of Ezekiel, trying to pull some things out. And to me, like I told the folks on Facebook, that's you people there, yeah. And uh, what I told the folks on Facebook is Ezekiel's a very hard book for me. Amen. I don't think I've ever read it straight through at one time. Uh the expert on it is Brother Dave. Amen. He loves the book of Ezekiel. I've read it 20 times. Yeah. <laughs> so that tells you how much he likes the book of Ezekiel. Amen. No, because I've read my Bible 20, going on 20 times. I was getting ready to say that for you, so you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he uh, he likes the figurativeness of it, the the. Uh, the cherubims and the the, uh, the wheels inside the wheel. And something one person pointed out there was that God wasn't sitting in the chariot. Amen. 
it we assumed that he was, but he wasn't. Uh, so if you have any questions on Ezekiel, see Brother Dave. Maybe. <laughs> but I'm not no Bible expert, and like you said, Ezekiel is a very is one of the hardest books because you don't know whether you're in the flesh or whether you're in the spirit. It goes back and forth. It's it's, it's flipping back and really, forth in there as you're speaking. You yeah. got to read it carefully. Yes. With a lot of prayer. Amen. A lot of prayer. You got to read it a lot of times. And it's the time of the captivity during that period where Daniel was and Jeremiah. Of course, Jeremiah by that time was about retired. Uh, I think Dr. Vernon McGee said that if he had a choice, he would rather be a Daniel than an Ezekiel. If he had a choice between Jeremiah, Daniel, or Ezekiel, he said because at least Daniel had some uh, really nice quarters at the king's palace. Amen. He did sleep with the lions one night, but the Lord protected him. Amen. And uh, he said, but Ezekiel, you know, Jeremiah had it rough. He was put in a dungeon and everything else. But once he got over to Babylon, it wasn't so bad uh, for him, from what we understand. But uh, Jeremiah did lament. That's the book of Lamentations, the five chapters in uh, Lamentations after the book of Jeremiah, where he lamented over the the destruction of Israel and Jerusalem and the temple and everything. I mean, he really loved it. But Ezekiel, what he, he laid on his side for, what, 330 days? On one side. On one side, naked. And on the other side. And then he had to do, I think it was 40 days, one for every year. He had to lay naked on the other side in public. And the Lord told him that he could have a certain measured amount of food and water but he had to cook his food with human dung. And he requested of the Lord that he could use animal dung. And so the Lord gave him permission to use animal dung. Now, people don't know some of this stuff. They, they never read their Bible, so they don't know this stuff. And when you say it, it's like, uh, you know, there's some, there's some things in there. You think about the, uh, the woman they cut up in 12 pieces after they had, abused her all night long and she died on the doorstep and he sent the pieces out to all the tribes. Amen. Uh, it's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, Jephthah in the book of judges, he made a vow unto God. That's why I said how God is serious about a vow. When you take a wedding vow, God's serious about a vow. Amen. And Jephthah said, if you give me the victory, let me win. I'm just ad living here. He says, uh, whatever comes out my house when I return home, I'll offer it up to you as a sacrifice. As he's coming into town, the door opens of his house, and guess who walks out? His daughter. She said, let me what bewail my virginity for what? How many? Two years. Uh, two months. Two months. And then she come back, and she didn't have a problem with it. He offered her up as a sacrifice. You see, a lot of people think God is Santa Claus. You know, you just sit on his lap and tell him how good you are and what you want. But God is a God of judgment. Amen. And God expects you when you make a vow to keep that vow. I made a vow and uh, it didn't turn out well because I didn't keep it. And I paid for it for years. And that's why we're where we're at now. Amen. And I know exactly what the problem was. I made a vow and I didn't keep it. I said, I told the Lord, I said, you get me out of this mess and I'll go full time again and I'll do this and I'll do that. It wasn't a, a week or so later, a man came up in the church here and said, I want to preach you full time. So he says, I'm going to donate that land to him down there at where the shop was. I went out and the man offered me $200,000 for that land said, just sign right here. Well, I knew Walmart was coming. I knew it was going to be a four lane. I said, no, I want 300,000. I figured I'd call his bluff. Well, he didn't, he didn't call. I knew he needed that land to use the land on the corner down there because there's some springs on there. And uh, so he went around behind me, got the lot behind me from this other woman. And uh, anyway, I said, well, he thinks I'm bluffing. So what I'll do is I went out and 
I borrowed forty some thousand dollars and brother Dave went down there and put a roof on that stone house and I cleared the land and, and all that. He didn't bite. So I said, well, let me just build a shop on it. Somebody said they needed a job and CMC wouldn't hire him. I said, well, if they won't hire you, I'll just build a shop and we'll hire you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and it's been purgatory since. <laughs> Amen. I broke a vow. Lord got me out of it. I could have been debt free and serving him full time. And I blew it. Amen. So he just let me sit here. I don't know how long he puts that pressure on us for a vow. But anyway, when I feel like it lifted when the place sold, but it took a heart attack to do that. Amen. So anyway, that's a little bit of my mess ups. So that's why I say God is serious about a vow. Amen. All right. Chapter 14 of Revelation. I'm going to read down through here. Good grief. Where'd the time go? Hey, Richard, look what you did. You messed me up. Man. <laughs> All right. We'll just read chapter 14 here. And, uh, well, actually, where I want to get to is over in chapter 16. Oh. Yeah, let's go to chapter 16, and we'll jump ahead here. I'll pick it back up in the next service, Lord willing, if it's his will. Chapter 16 of Revelation, beginning in verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Could you imagine that? You imagine being on a carnival cruise, and he turns it into the ocean, the seas, into blood? Mm. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord which art and was and shalt be because thou hast judged us for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets and thou hast given them blood to drink for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, even so Lord God almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. I told this story. I gave this illustration uh, every time I read through here. But I was working for a man that taught me heavy equipment. And we were out at Eastover at SCNG down there by, at the ponds in the back where the coal ash was. And it's summertime. And we were putting a head on one of the engines in the crane. And I mean, it was hot. And it was late in the afternoon, figure that, finish that job up, you know, for the day. And we were up on that machine. It was so hot. I'm sure if Richard and y'all know what it's like, pick up a wrench or touch a wrench on top of them machines when the sun's up and it's hot. And he had sweat and snot running out of his nose. He was so miserable and and all he could do is take the Lord's name in vain. And I thought about that. People being scorched with fire and not repenting. Amen. And I thought to myself, man, if he dies, he goes to hell. And you know what? I, I preached to him and he'd asked a few questions from time to time. But I don't know that he ever got saved. And he says, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness that they gnawed their tongues for pain. 
and blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repent it not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. That's your satanic trinity. Amen. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there were, was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. That's about 90 to 100 pounds. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Now when he brings them to Armageddon, he said they're going to eat the flesh of kings and mighty men. Amen. But he said the blood from what we read will run 10 miles wide and I think about 200 miles long up to a horse's bridle. He's bringing all these nations down upon him and then he's going to destroy them. That's what you have to look forward to during the tribulation period if you're alive. The first three and a half years of the tribulation period are going to be peace. They'll be saying peace, peace when there is no peace. Satan is going to make a covenant with the people of Israel and set up the temple and everything in Jerusalem. And then in the middle of the week, three and a half years, in the middle of the week, he's going to manifest who he really is and turn on them. And then all these judgments begin to happen in the book of Revelation. All these things are going to come upon the men in that day. Great suffering, pain, torment. I used to believe, because I was told that when I was a youngster, that if you didn't make it and the Lord came, that you had a second chance during the tribulation. Well, if you won't reject, I mean, if you won't receive the Lord Jesus Christ in this dispensation of grace, amen, you're surely not going to do it during the tribulation period. If you reject Christ now, I don't believe you're going to have a second chance. If the Lord was to come tonight and the tribulation period started, he took the church out. I don't think that the folks that sat under a Bible preaching, Bible teaching church that rejected Christ when he was preached would have another chance. Matter of fact, God says he turns them over to a reprobate mind in Romans chapter one for those that rejected him there who did not like to retain God in their, in their knowledge. So this is a very serious thing. And I'm going to say this tonight. You never know if this is the last message you're going to hear. You think about them young children. They've heard the message. They've been here. They never knew the last time they were here, if they'd ever hear another message, have another chance. Amen. And you don't either. That's why he says, behold, now is the day of salvation. Now, while you're alive and breathing, not maybe if you make it to tomorrow, but now, the most important thing, whether our young friend makes it or not, is 
if his soul is right with God. That's the most important thing. And if it is and he goes, he'll be better off than you or I. But if it isn't, he'll be worse off. I think sometimes that God gives us a wake-up call for you to get serious. Like I've said many times before, you could leave here tonight and not make it home. So you just need to be ready. Amen? Amen. Would you like to dismiss this, Russ? Sure. Thank you. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you in prayer, God, we thank you so much for this time we can gather together in your name and share uh, scriptures and the message that the pastors brought to us tonight. And again, we just want to uh, reiterate those children that are laying in hospital beds. We do pray for their souls. Yeah, the amen. In the event that it's their time to come and meet you. Lord, just be with their uh, the congregation here tonight as we separate and that you bring, bring us back together at a point in time. Watch over us, guard us, keep us straight and narrow. In your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Anybody else? We have six people. <laughs>